Hey everybody, welcome back to Sick Talks. This is number 66. I'm here with my longtime friend and longtime inspiration, Jason Creer. Jason yeah. is the, uh, uh, until recently was the, the North American CCO at Accenture Song. He's now got a new venture coming, which maybe he'll tell us about, maybe he won't. It's awfully mysterious. I don't know. I mean, for a man in the woods there, Jason, I would say you're you're keeping up with appearances really well with all this mystery. I've not actually been where I've said I've been for almost 11 months, so I'm not going to tell you where this bunker is. I have some fake trees in the background to make you think I'm in the Pacific Northwest, but you might hear some gunshots and some foreign language coming from behind those trees. Interesting. Like interesting. Well, I think it's appropriate to find you in a wooded backdrop because the last time we saw each other in person, I believe, was actually at your house, which is in this wonderful, you know, wooded sort of... I don't know, maybe a glade, maybe a glen, a glen, maybe. Uh, anyway, beautiful house and 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 uh, you know, well appointed as you'd expect with a man of your sort of creative taste. But it was it was, uh, you know, if you had told me, oh, I'm just in my sitting room, I would have believed that also. So you know, it's. Did I, I tell you, speaking of my my fancy appointments, my interior design passion, <laughs> which is like Pinterest collections, uh, has yeah, yeah, but... the gayest sentence of all time. You heard my gayest, gayest? No, 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 no. I mean, Jason, as a, as a, as a, um, as a, uh, an avatar for, uh, the gayest things in life, I, I would expect you to have the gayest sentence, but please tell me, please tell me. I thought you were say, as a, as a straight as a narrow man, I can't wait to hear what this is. <laughs> um, no, I, we, uh, I'll just start with the sentence. Yeah. My husband flew back down to Palm Springs pick up the chandelier we purchased from the Lena Horn estate. <laughs> Every bit of it true. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe uh, you could raise the Lena Horn with a Liberace, but otherwise that is, that is as, yeah, there you go. Jason. spot on. Um, it's, uh, Just, I would, I mean, God, how could it not be Lena Horn estate? Um, you got, a, and, you got and, pictures of sick. You want me to send you a <laughs> Y'all got pictures there? I'll send you a picture. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's it's funny you should mention that because I, you know, I, I I am constantly trying to figure out the ways in which I can, you know, welcome people into my bizarre and multifarious world, and and you know, pictures are certainly one of those. So maybe there's a recurring photo feature. I'd love to see your chandelier, which also sounds like a weird, it's also, also a pretty gay sentence too. The, <laughs> I'd love to see your chandelier one day. <laughs> come up to look at my etchings. Is that what it was in the sixties? Um, speaking. Of, Wait, so multifarious. Multifarious, yeah. Multifarious. Multifarious. Yeah. Multifarious. Kind yeah. of a, the, the the point I wanted to make about when you were saying here's the links for Thursday and let's yeah. take a look at it. And that first one is no, you can't do everything. I roll, and that immediately I was like, that's my problem. Let's see what the. So I read that and it was a, it's a great article. It's like a great yeah. read in the middle of a lot of links, but it was cool. Um, but I want to, I mean, I want to talk to you about that. I, I Have you read, um, I don't know if I'm, I'm stepping on your intro to your show. You're but, not. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll go back around and explain in a minute. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> have you read Daily Rituals? Do you know what that is? The book? I don't think so. I think no. you'd really like it. It's uh, Daily okay. Rituals. Um, it's probably 200 pages and it's okay uh, each chapter is an artist each chapter is like three pages and it is oh, cool. what we know about the rituals by which they create from Gauguin to jane you know like uh, austin or in and it's really interesting there's nothing to be gained from it paul Gauguin could not paint without like the single cleanest workspace of all time and his rigor was so and so and then Somebody wakes up at 4 p.m., blacks out on gin, does this, and it's really interesting to see. But the common thread to me was that, like, oh, they, they do have a ritual, whether they fell into yeah. it or they created it. Um, and I like how short each one is because I don't really yeah, care that much about each one of those things in depth. But um, well, you're you're a you're a man with with a with a way f uh, uh, with uh, you have a way with um, short sentences, right? Or Popsicle mm. stick jokes, as the case may be. As like, the case may be. Thank you. Well, okay. So, okay. So, guys, J Jason did a, did a great job of setting it up. But the long story short is this conversation is meant to be a companion to the Sick Weekly newsletter, which I publish on Thursdays and which you can find at sickweekly.substack.com. Um, the 
idea of it is basically links that I find throughout the week that I sort of bookmark or tab if you want that, that, that I just think are interesting as as part of the pattern recognition of my life in the communication arts uh, put badly. And um, the the idea is to have somebody talk to me about the links that jumped out to him or to her them um, over the course of, of each week. Uh, the, the, the link that Jason just um, mentioned, which I, is notable for a couple of reasons. One, it's, it's from a, um, a newsletter called The Trend Report that's done by a guy named Kyle Raymond Fitzpatrick, who, funny enough, is going to be a guest on Sick Talks in two weeks and um, who I don't know at all, you know, unlike Jason, who I've known for 20 years at this point, almost, um, who, who I have no relationship with at all. So it's a good, it's a cool relation. It's a cool sort of way to get into it. But anyway, it's a, it's a fun piece and one that you guys should check out. Um, but Jason, to the point of rituals, it started to, it seemed like you were starting to ask me a question and I'm Well, I, you know, I could, we could bounce around on the different, link. I just sort of assume everybody reads sick, which is, I didn't realize you had to explain to a, a broad audience who doesn't know your fine work. You, you, uh, you, you always assume people are the, are the first, it's the first time, always assume. <laughs> um, the, behind the scenes of you seemed pretty interesting, which I think, I know you're interviewing me and I can talk about that stuff too, but the colossal undertaking it takes to have this quality of you have a point of view, but you also have a wide, broad variety of um, sources. And I can barely seem to keep up with like my Tumblr. So the last time I was on here, I talked, or the last time I was in sick, it was mostly based on, on my now 16 year old Tumblr. Um, yeah. And uh, I'm curious how you, what's your, whether it's a ritual or whether it's your like ethos about like the, the you can't do it all feeling is half FOMO, half burnout exhaustion, half how am I going to get to what I need in the day to be a functioning. Um, so I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of big questions here, Ben. I'm yeah. Of well, okay. So to, to, to answer the question and to go back to the beginning, my first job, out of, I, I have always been, a, a, a little bit of a of a magpie in terms of where I pull stuff from. I grew up in a market in Syracuse that was literally a demographic test market. So it was the that right mix of socioeconomics, racial, you know, I immigrant and 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 you know, endemic populations, all that sort of stuff. And so, consequently, it was it we got a really Catholic mix of things, right? Um, and, and that trained me. Oh, and also this is. Some, it's a, it's an unsung thing, but it's something I've been thinking about recently because my son actually did a summer program at Syracuse and I was reminded how changeable the weather there is. Literally like sunny skies, a cloud rolls in, it rains for 10 minutes, the cloud goes away, it dries up in 15 minutes, it stays like that for two hours and then another cloud rolls in. And and, and what happens is you you sort of become adaptable in a way or, or used to change in a way that I, it, I had never really internalized until I went back there this summer and, and observed this again. Anyway, when I – my first job, my boss at the time, a guy named Randy Irwin, who is a mentor and, 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 and somebody really important to me, he, he had kids at – and so he would get into the office two hours before everybody else did because he would take the kids to daycare or whatever. They were little at the time. And he just said – he was like, yeah, I just read the internet for two hours. And then when people come in, by the time people come in, I'm the most interesting person on the floor because I know everything. And I always took that to heart. And then, so I, and I started to do it and I've done it for many years. Like I get up, I wait, I drink coffee, I read the internet for a couple of hours and then I get started on stuff. And when I was at Vice, that ha it happened in the same way as it did for Randy. Other people showed up and I was always in most interesting, but it's just, it's that it's like, it's my, it's my mental exercise. And when towards the end of my career, I just started grabbing stuff that I didn't think any of the kids were paying attention to that they should have been paying attention to. And I started putting it in a newsletter because I was tired of explaining myself in, in meetings. I was tired of being like, Oh, did you see the thing? So yeah, that's it. And it's just, so it's, it's, it's natural extent. It's basically because Syracuse, it, because it rains a lot in Syracuse. It rains in Syracuse. Well, yeah. It, was, it struck it. me right there. How much you sound exactly like Gwyneth Paltrow talking about goop and how that came to be. I, I, Jason, you you for those who don't know you, you are a, a satirist par excellence. Uh, uh, you have a, a sense for the, for the sublime in comedy. So I do not know if you're paying me a compliment or making fun of me, but I take it very well both ways. I, mean, I accept that. Wonderful. 
That's the best. <laughs> Two things can be true at the same time. I've learned that recently in therapy. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm glad you're making breakthroughs. That is cool. That, was that cool. is cool. Yeah. You know, that, to, to... That, you know what I learned from therapy? I am so basic, straight down the middle. You know what I mean? Like, tell me about it. Okay, so you, okay, so no, so talk about that because you don't strike me as straight down the basic, straight down the middle oh, at all. Problem, and yet, like, I and yet, I understand exactly what you mean. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I. Yeah. You think you're such a special snowflake with all these complex whatever, and then you finally like get down to it, and it's like, oh, I'm a people pleaser. Oh, but that actually gave me a lot of benefit as well as a lot of heartache. <laughs> okay, I mean it's like a the name of a chapter in every single book about everything, but it's like, <laughs> oh, the machinations it took to get to that light bulb moment. None of, nobody's light bulb moment is interesting. It's because it's you just can't think that that's what's yeah. happening to you. Is that it's like that easy? Oh, I should yeah. express my feelings more, <laughs> more uh, frequently. Okay, that's uh, yeah, I should have. Sure. Okay. Well, so, okay. So, so that's okay. So let's let's drill in on that for a second. So, so for those that don't know, um, Jason has a, a has a sixteen year old Tumblr, which is a, a source of great mirth and, uh, <laughs> a, a, but also a like a, 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 a I think a pretty interesting sort of cultural tracker over the last decade and a half. Um, the handle is fuck you, fuck no, you fuck no fuck got me. <laughs> a gentleman like, got me became a thing. I was like. I was so all over that I could not wait, and then I kind of waited a little bit too long, and uh, it's like fine, but it was um that was that was the novelty uh, dots era. That right. was, I think I bought <laughs> come play with dot us and did like a looping JPEG of the twins from The Shining, and I was like, oh, oh, my oyster, the fucking, they're all gonna come running, and then fuck you no fuck dot me turned into my Tumblr. Well, <laughs> well, so. The the thing I was going to say was that that you you have expressed yourself creatively pretty frequently I would say over the course of that time notwithstanding the fact that you had a very long career at at in in or you have had a very long career in in, in advertising which is now taking some sort of new dimension which, which we may or may not hear about but uh, you know at at at, at Wyden and an Accenture song and in at being an author and et cetera and so hearing a therapist say you should just express yourself more. <laughs> I oh, sort of like, geez. how much more am I supposed to express myself here? Yeah, no, nobody's waiting for it. <laughs> I think it was, I need to be expressing things that aren't cowbell jokes playing in the corner and maybe talk about what's actually going on. Uh, I like that turn of phrase. Is is a cowbell, is that a real thing? A cowbell joke? No, that's how I hear things that aren't important. Just like, clang, 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 like yeah, yeah, sure. clown honking or cowbells. I, I think I, I wrote a blurb one time that was like the, it said something about that. The you're increasingly uh, irrelevant career and the honking of marketing horns and the clanging of internet cowbells or something like that. And I don't. It's not a phrase. It just is one of those when your mouth opens and you say something. You're like, oh yeah, that is kind of how I. You go on LinkedIn and it just yeah 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 you know, like cowbells. But. I mean. So it, yeah, welcome to the world of cowbells. Um, Did you see? You must have. This was a while ago. But the guy that was what? like, it was a screen grab. Well, well, LinkedIn brethren, I'll get right to it. Yes, I tried to kill myself last night. On and on and on. <laughs> and it was like because I really like I missed the LinkedIn no, thing. No, no, I thought I it was didn't like, see like your resume, and then I know people occasionally post their like ads, but I just I just. Not out of anything, I just gonna and, and so I went and posted a, an ad, and then there, all these people jumped on. They're like, "Have you considered so and so?" And then they've got some ad for their own thing. So I, yeah. I kind of didn't know it was, and now I am fascinated by LinkedIn. It is a closed ecosystem where you know, like when you well, scientists open caves and there's geckos in there and they don't have any eyes anymore, and they've adapted to the like darkness of the cave. That little terrarium of like. I, I'm a businessman and I'm a hustler and I know what I'm talking about. They're all speaking in this like, um, benevolent educator voice. Yeah. What you don't realize about these days is like, Oh my God. I can't get I, over it. The, I, I, the, 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 any, any sentence or presumption that, is, that starts with what the other person doesn't know is just like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Teachable what, moments. What, 
what a, I mean, just, just what a, what a. That's a good way to say uh, in, that. In, inexcusable like, presumption. You don't know this. So I am like, you're welcome for me. Finally. It's like the phrase yeah. educate, like I'm educate I, somebody. I have pulled the blinders from your eyes. Well, I think, I, yeah. I mean, look, I think that's, that's, it's funny, actually. It's like, to me, this is, this is a, a, a big struggle with the contemporary discourse generally is this presumption that a, my point of view is central to the world B that nobody knows any of the things that I know and C that if I don't tell those people and signal my value that I am not valuable. And it's just like, not, none of those things are true. So <laughs> those are in the terms and conditions of like platform, yeah. <laughs> social media platforms you join. Well, not just media platforms. It's, it's like Thanksgiving dinner. It's like, yeah, it's just sure. crazy. Parenting is, the, you must have noticed this, like, I miss it because it's, it's just me and my husband and we don't have the condescending talk to moms thing that a lot of women deal with, but it is shocking how much somebody thinks they need to tell you about your business. Yeah. Zero information yeah. about it. Yeah, I mean, well, why, why, why not? I've accumulated all this experience. Why would every, Why would I not be able to inflict it and, or feel feel empowered to inflict it the on best everybody? Way to do it though, In, is through the baby's voice. Like, that's how you need to <laughs> tell your passive aggressive, Mommy, my feet are cold. Put my socks on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's not my Oh, baby. my God. Dude, that is the craziest. Um, <laughs> well, okay, so so I want I to touch on something which I think is interesting. Like, one of the things that, I, that like, the, the, the weekly newsletter, and I, I, I appreciate the kind words – but it it also is it's I I struggle with it constantly because it's 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 just like how much is too much how much can people take nobody can read it I don't really want them to just to read everything like it's it's that's definitely not the the the, the goal but it, what I what I do wonder about is to what extent I I trespass into this that sensation on LinkedIn where it's like you know that that forced sharing teachable moment situation. And what I, the question that I wanted to ask you is as somebody who is creating messages for advertising mediums and increasingly every medium is an advertising medium. Every surface is a surface for messaging. How, how do you, how do you get to the heart of what the most effective surface is to start with and then have something radiate out because clearly you can't do on every surface because everything is a surface and you can't just pick the ones that worked in the past because they are no longer the surface du jour. Sorry. It's a kind of. No, it's a great question. And it's like, it's funny watching how we would struggle with it 10 years ago. And it just felt like an unlock for me five where it was like, Oh, nobody knows. So you just do it. You, yeah. you, the experimenting has stopped becoming terrifying and started becoming lucrative in terms of attention or, creative opportunity or efficacy. Um, I, I think I've, I've said this a lot. It's like, I've, I've checked off the like, oh my God, look what I got away with part of the creative part of my career. And now it needs to be that and effective in order for it to yeah. feel like it's satisfying to me. And I, I think, how do you get to it? It's unfortunate. It's like, it's like why I like this business and my business people hate this business is it's like, it's so ephemeral right there. Yeah. There's so much data uh -huh. you can throw out. There's so much learning. There's so much consumer, but like in an increasingly fragmented, my, uh, you'll like this. My buddy, Carl Lieberman is the global CCO of Wyden said, uh, he's like, we all have to kind of remember we're in this, <laughs> we're in this, uh, time right now where people can go, but I don't want to watch House Hunters. I want to watch House Hunters International. <laughs> and that, that being the summary of our uh, fragmented media <laughs> landscape. Is very yeah. But like, I think I'm finding upstream, if you have like people that understand the role of a, an idea or the role of a voice, I think it's a voice. Yeah. I have a tough time yeah. talking about ideas. Everybody's got ideas. If you can find yeah. it, I say this all the time, KFC was the first one where I felt it. If you have a strong creative voice, that's fun. The most boring business challenge becomes a fun opportunity. If you've got that voice sure. to apply it to, it's like, cause you need something boring and results oriented and paid attention to by the right people to say, this is the problem. This is the thing we need to increase sales, increase attention, increase relevance, whatever it is. 
Right. People that know that and, and can identify that part, when you add that to, I was just saying this the other day, Colonel Sanders, we, we started that whole layer of that weird work by going into his archives. And the coolest thing we found was a book um, that had an ad for every single day of the year, 365. New year, new chicken. Flip over the, and this is from 70 years ago. He said any day and any opportunity, it was a medium of, of a uh, newspaper, but he was in movies. He was at like, he found this voice of his and put it. It's as, in, oh God. Yeah, that's okay. So that's fascinating because I mean, not being nearly as steeped in, in the, the lore of, of Colonel Sanders, it's easy. I, 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 matter of fact, until you had mentioned it just now, I had forgotten that Colonel Sanders was a real person. And as far as I'm concerned, Colonel Sanders is the Geico gecko. You know what I mean? He's like some character created for the purposes of merchandising, you know, breasts and thighs. Um, but you're saying that was the actual Colonel Sanders at some point in a fever dream, sat down and wrote an ad for every day of the year and it, went. It's probably not him. Maybe him. Right. He was he was into it. It was just like he, <laughs> he was a chicken salesman. He was a he had a crazy he was a lawyer beforehand. He like shot the other lawyer in court like he had he, as, as a real you would not be he's a uh, real southern lawyer then he's a real he's southern a... lawyer yeah he's, i mean he's called her like one he just absolutely is um but his frenzy of like a salesman will always take an opportunity turning right. that into the opportunity is a romance novel a moment on a soap opera a dating sim from a japanese game show all the sure. stuff that factory of work that was made is because there was a simple voice and each one of those things, probably not visible to the naked eye, were business problems that needed tackling. And then you yeah. apply the direct amount of budget to them and it becomes like a really fun factory of creative problem solving over and over again that don't feel like most other people would get the brief and it was like, Mother's Day sales are down 1.1% year over end and we need a non-coupon promotional. That turned into a romance novel that was a JPEG and it blew up sales for the day because it was yeah. targeted correctly, I guess. It, it, okay, so it's funny. You you just helped me crystallize something. So thanks. Um, but the uh, Anything, which which was like and I, and I talked about this a little bit last week and with on my conversation with with Ryan Broderick from Garbage Day. Um, but it, one of the things that I've been talking a lot to people about is is designing what I call super format, which is essentially like the, the, the kernel, the, no pun intended, the, the, the kernel with a K, um, the atomic unit of creation that then can be dimensionalized into lots of different ways that, that radiate out like ripples in a pond, concentric circles, whatever you want to call it. And the, in, in terms of figuring out what, what super format sort of, is to get to the heart of it, what you just helped me sort of put words to is that it, it is a vehicle for that voice. It is the most effective and most scalable or most modular vehicle for that voice. And so you're, I mean, I'm, I'm making a deck about this. You're going to end up in my deck. I'm not going to credit you, of course, because I'm an egomaniac and, you know, I came up with all this stuff myself. But it's cease and desist if my name showed up in the thing. <laughs> um, Speaking of cease and desist, by the way, there is a Marvel production outside happening outside my house at the moment, um, which has which sent over an NDA, which was basically like, if you say anything about this, the full force of Disney is coming after you. Meanwhile, there's like hundreds of people on the street just like standing around. And it's just like, that's the lawyer like, job. Well, no. like, we well we we are we in theory anyway are being used as a location and so oh god they're they're, they're essentially they're going to put a light in my backyard and you know that are they paying you a ton no no they're not but you know but you get to say you're when when Shazam falls I don't down, I don't really get to say I'm shit that's the problem with this NDA is that you know if I if I want the money I gotta I gotta. <laughs> not say anything about it, but my, it's a fucking line. But the, the, the thing that I, the thing that I, the, the thing that I, I, I just, sorry, this is a total digression from our conversation, but it, it just, it, 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 um, it struck me. 
I want that job as the lawyer who just writes the NDAs for things that are obviously not secret at all. Not in the <laughs> least bit. Oh. Just like, just don't, sitting don't there churning out lunch. contracts that yeah. are, that are a non enforceable B not secrets at in any way, which it's just, God bless it. Just the, the amount of busy work, which actually brings me to a, brings me to a, a question that I, that I, I, I had for you. Your medium and also the, the, the way that you create multifariously, I would say is, is one that I would imagine laps over or in theory anyway, laps over pretty directly with the tools of artificial intelligence and that sort of stuff. Meaning it is writing, it is conception, it is illustration, it is art direction, it is all of that sort of stuff. I had a conversation, I was talking to Ryan Broderick from Garbage Day, as I said last week, and and what I said to him was like, I th in in a year or however many, however long it is that we're into this, all of that stuff just strikes me as kind of a, a mechanism to create more. And more doesn't denote any particular value. It's just tonnage. But I wonder to what extent you have looked at and and similarly, like the attorney who is creating those NDAs for Marvel is just creating more. I wonder to what extent y y where you are on the journey right now with all of that stuff. AI. Well, let's. I want to tackle the more part first. Um, yeah, sure. I think something I did pretty consciously, and this is I don't think for the service of my clients. It's just my taste and personality is. Sure. I always ended up with a campaign that was like 12, 15 second spots. And this, like, I just like the ability to have a lot and have that all work together in, in tandem rather than where other people have succeeded beautifully. It's like a 90 second perfectly crafted single thing mm -hmm. that is blasted everywhere. And, and that's that instinct or that at least uh, way that I default has helped in this increasingly fragmented and immediate landscape house hunter. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I think the more part though is where it falls down a little bit is that mm -hmm. I would do more and I needed to work really hard to lower costs and entry points so I could do more because there's nothing worse than something that needs a bunch of stuff and gets three of them. Then mm -hmm. it's like yeah, yeah, the sure. worst of both worlds. So in terms of that lining up with AI and um, I mean, that's what was so fascinating about the article you sent is that like the, the laziness by which you are able to come to feeling like you've done something. <laughs> it's the, it's the new, um, I said interior designing and like laughing because that was his example of uh, I'm just going to hire an interior designer to help realize my vision rather than actually use them as an expert. Right. Because I'm clearly an expert because I have some intense shortcuts that have gotten me to my well-earned taste. Um, and I think that, you know, every one of us is going back and forth as a, like, you know, egotistical validation-seeking creative person is like, am I replaceable? Is it just fast? No, I'm an expert. And then you're like, I didn't study at the hands of, you know, it, it, it's how does it line up yet? it's so in transition now that it's fun mm -hmm. to watch. You sent me uh here's what my AI assistant learned about you from the internet. And it's like, yeah, I'd say 97% exactly what I would have labored over for 20 minutes to tell you about myself. Just already scrubbed. They know I would have put yeah. my website up three higher, but that's Google. Yeah. Fault. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. And that's such an easy, well, so then I saved 25 minutes. It's and also, that is it's not, also, um... no, go, go ahead. ahead, go ahead. Oh, I just said that's those minutes. Do you just pour them into more <laughs> when you save something? You can create a piece of content. Then let's do 10 pieces of content. They don't cost anything. And then it's more. And it's just this like pile of content. I mean, we've all been bitching about the word content for 15 years now, but it's like, oh, it's, but it works for a significant amount of things. And people are sucking in this content because you're in charge of pulling the levers and telling them where they're going to get it and when they're going to get it. And it's exhausting. Yeah. It's like, so I worry about AI not taking over the world Skynet wise is it's like, Oh, it's just going to cram every fold of our brain with whatever we've started to see. We've seen it before, but now at a pace 
that is unmatched. Do you, okay, so so that's uh, the, the every fold of our, uh, my brain thing reminds me, and I, I don't know if, I, if you saw this in, in last week's newsletter, but every, you have definitely experienced this before, but I, uh, every February I take the month off from intoxicants and eating animal products. It's my straight, it's my return to my straight edge vegan roots in Syracuse, which I never really had. But in any case, the, uh, what I decided to add to my sort of, um, self-inflicted, uh, uh, trial this month, this, this year was that I'm going to try to watch a feature film every day of the month or thereabouts. And the first movie I watched was, um, defending your life, the Albert Brooks yeah. film, which I don't know if you've seen, but it, it's, uh, it is, it is about essentially Albert Brooks is funny enough, not why I bring it up, but funny enough, he's an advertising executive who is sort of, you know, mid career, doing well. On his birthday, buys himself a, a, like a, a an attaboy gift of a new car, and immediately crashes it headlong into a bus, and goes to the place where you defend your life. And the the conceit is that the 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 entities there, the souls there, are people who have ascended past the earth because they can use more than three percent of their brains. This is the and, so, Meryl in this one, or am I getting that confused? Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Meryl, Meryl. It, it's it's Albert Brooks and Meryl Streep primarily, and Rip Torn and uh, somebody else. But in, in any case, the what I what I wonder about is, do you buy into the idea at all that the stuffing the folds of our brains with more makes the brains stronger? Does it exercise our brains? Or do we get closer to that? moment of transcendence or is it literally just like junk See, food because yeah, there's so i mean again it's why i would keep talking about that thing you can't have it you can't do it all you can't have everything like it yeah. seems like i can right now it is shocking how much i've dialed what information goes into my head i feel like i don't really suffer through a lot of things i have a lot of very short like that what's that thing that there's always like ads for the it summarizes <laughs> rich dad poor dad in 15 minutes you know what i mean like oh blinkist i think is the one that i okay like, sure yeah yeah sure blinkist humankind has been blinkisted so i feel like i can watch a tiktok creator explain to me something fascinating and true you know they go into the role of journalism and actually who are these clowns and half of them are not to be trusted or any of them but uh um, yeah, yeah you do get some like I did not know that about, you know, like when Stevie Wonder won album of the year two times in a row. I'm not, I'm not looking up the, the Nuremberg trials or anything on TikTok. Um, so that information, but that's not hard earned information. And that feels like it'll skim off my brain pretty so. Whoosh, yeah. And you're chased sure. by another, you know, leaf of. Sure. Then I, also, are those eroding the like, who won the War of 1812? Like, yeah quickly replaced by how tall Snooky is, you know? I think that's what's happening to me. I'm not getting stronger. Four foot eight, am I right? Four foot eight. God bless her. She's from yeah. Poughkeepsie, so she's like my, my my mother grew up in Poughkeepsie, so I, I there's a lot of and this is what I was kind of getting to. It's like you, you need to find those emotional resonance points that you can attach things to so that you can remember how tall Snooky is. Um That was an impressive by the way, that was that was well done. <laughs> You know, I, I, I see it. you tapping your foot. I know you're tell you are pleased as punch with that little <laughs> that, that little sizzler I, you threw in. Right I was there. actually tapping my foot just then, which is pretty funny. That's pretty yeah. funny. I didn't realize that my uh, my my tell on the video pod was that obvious. Um, all right, so Jason, the 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 ostensible purpose of these of these conversations, although they never, ever stick to the script, is is to go through and, and talk about some of the other stories that you thought were notable. We talked about the, the you know, you can't do everything one that, that Post that Kyle wrote. What else grabbed you from, from this week that was interesting, not interesting, terrifying, thrilling? Well, um, I mean, everything with the AI, every time I click on it, I have the same feeling, which is like, let's see what we got here. Like, and I did. I read a tweet a while ago that was like, "Can you stop getting AI to write our plays and just help it get trash out of the ocean?" 
And so I feel like I'm always looking for the AI that gets trash out of the ocean, which is why I'm digging. It doesn't get the headlines. I know very smart people are using it in very functional ways that is not in a um, my my marketing saturated algorithm of yeah. everybody panicking because you know you're gonna AI is gonna take your job doing Toyota Yaris commercials <laughs> by blending the background seamlessly for whatever city you're watching it in. Um, is the Yaris still a car, by the way? Is that still? No, a no, but that one popped out like real confidently. Yeah, well, Toyota I mean, Yaris ads. I I don't have those, and I can't think of what one is. I mean, it's a funny uh, thing. The, the Yaris. That's how, that's how it works. The Yaris, yeah, no, no, no. I mean, tr trust me, because I, I was, I was in traffic the other day behind a Toyota truck that looked just the right amount of wrong, and it turned out to be a Toyota Prado, which I had never heard of before. And it's one of these things. It's like some, some nerd, you know, went to Africa and found some special continental only Toyota and imported over here so he could be the coolest guy at the fourth stop on the L train or whatever it is. But it's just like, it's one of those things, but it was also like, okay, I was, I'm going to remember that. It was Toyota. That was ended up being the trucks that all the Al Qaeda guys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. Be, I mean, be, did you see that those... unbelievable? Uh, this is again, it's another bit of detritus that floats in and out of my mind, but I guess Adidas was in Moscow for the Olympics and they may okay. be like, set up a quick factory there to make shoes and outfits for the athletes. Okay. I'm going to, again, this is a perfect example of how I did a deep dive and then the deep dive has turned into a shallow uh, puddle. Um, but they made gazelles that said Moscow instead of gazelles on the side of them. Oh, interesting. Okay. And then they left, but they left the factory there with Chad still the shit. So they started sort of printing these and they ended up in soldier on soldiers that were like training for all the things that Russian soldiers in the eighties would be training for. And they had these incredible pictures of these soldiers, like kicking open a door, like, and wearing these like custom gazelles that said Moscow. Right. And, and right. Um, I've seen them now turned into these beautiful Adidas ads. Um, I, I, I have, I, I, you know, I have not, well, you wait, wait, when you say you've seen them turn into beautiful Adidas ads, you mean, they're not, not real. real Adidas. Tumblr. Yeah. Tumblr well, okay. Real. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. So this is this is so fascinating because there are two articles in the in the newsletter this week. One is about the CEO of Deckers, um, who is the, which is the parent company of among others um, Hoka, Uggs, and and Tiva, the the sandal brand, and he is teasing on his earnings call a new net new technical sneaker brand that they're going to bring out that they're really excited about and they're developing in, 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 in all the ways. And the, the other one was a story about Under Armour plotting their new sneaker to go viral. And both of these things strike me as totally logical, totally part of the course of business and growth and business innovation, part of being in this competitive landscape and both totally ridiculous. Yeah. And, and, and yet that's how the ecosystem that we're a part of operates, right? It's like somebody makes a decision to do a thing that doesn't make any sense at all for lots of different reasons and maybe makes a little bit of sense for half good reasons when you're presented with a with a, 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 a you know an opportunity a brief a challenge a, a you know a debacle however you want to characterize it like that how, how do you how do you sort of write yourself to face it in a way that allows you to take it on diplomatically it is, it's like what you have to have first is a deep knowledge of a voice and then a clear articulation of a problem. So I never succeed and see it succeed sometimes, but very rarely, if somebody's gonna present to me something like here is a platform solution or a trend solution that you should stick your ad into, I find that it's more effective, but also more fruitful to just, if you have a knowledge of all these absurd things, 
Like the reason that you can say I want that shoe to go viral with without blinking. I mean, that fucking red boot from Mischief. That was like the most viral thing. And before yeah. that, like, I mean, it's it's been happening. The gladiator sandal is the hot new thing in the 90s. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure there's viral before there was viral. Yeah, yeah for sure. And now you just are co-opting language to say a large number of people want to want our product uh, without us paying for the advertising to get it. Like, it's, it's, it's utterly absurd, but like, also, no, it's not. It's like, yeah, they're going to yeah. say they're building this to go viral like best of luck that that uh that doesn't always have a high hit rate <laughs> but well uh, i mean n- never mind n- never mind that it, it, it's like it, and it's funny for whatever reason when we were when we were in the process of going back and forth and talking about this you, you said you wanted to talk about no pun intended process and um what instantly occurred to me was this line from tenacious d um, the the TV show on HBO, not the joke band that then followed it, and not you know the subsequent revivals of that joke band that followed it, but literally the TV show on on HBO where they have this episode where Jack says to Kyle, "You can't manufacture inspirato," oh. and then by the end of the day, they're like, "We got to manufacture yeah, inspirato," yeah. like it, you know, whatever it is, and. and and that that has always struck me because it's like we, we we sit at this nexus of needing to to manufacture that stuff and of course it being way too ephemeral to be manufactured in any kind of meaningful way and it, it I, I don't know i don't know i don't yeah, even have a point the, there it's, it's an observation part of creative business it's yeah like, i suppose so that guy has what he needs we need to make a viral thing and i'm doing it i'm telling the right people to do the thing because and then it'll work if, if it works and then it won't if it won't and that will determine whether he becomes the CMO of Nike or of Glad you know press and seal. And it's really like chasing something that you can put as much effort and energy and smarts behind it. There's always this inconvenient, but it didn't work. And I think yeah. you. How do you? I, I'm not interested in telling you how you solve that. Like find people that have done it before multiple times and yeah, see what their deal is. How do you uh, do you do you get the opportunity to sit with that the CMO in question or the or the whomever it is decision maker in question and spend some time actually sort of understanding where they're coming from and where their stimuli lies before you then get chat tasked with those kind of assignments? It depends. Uh, most successfully, yes, when I feel like I actually understand what your problem is and they understand that I'm not going to come back with what they think the solution should be. And it's a rare group of people, but they are the ones. If you see good work, it's because of this. It's a, just full stop. You are open to something that you didn't think of as a CMO because that's why you hire somebody else. You can't think of it. Yeah. And I can't think, I can't truly understand your business problem based on what creatively I want to make out of it. So there's a, a genuine, uh, it's a, it's a, like mutual respect for what the other one does. Not yeah. a, finally they downloaded me for the information. And of course it's, it's the best ones are like, well, that wasn't the fucking solution. I thought you were going to come up with. That's a good thing. Right. And then we, I think that, uh, that happens best, but I'm also famously, um, I work really hard to not drink the Kool-Aid. I love that that's like a casual phrase that you can say, the slaughter of all those poor people. Um, I work really hard to not <laughs> buy into the, I don't think you need to be an utter fan I, of a product. Oh, you like that? No, I was just gonna say, I mean, but bizarrely, right? Divorced, it, it has become such a, a, you know, a, a, a useful aphorism that had you not brought it up, it never would have, Jonestown oh, never would so have occurred friendly, to me. Right? Like, at the yeah. company, I'm going to drink their Kool-Aid gum. I love it here. Not like. Well, I mean, it's like Kool-Aid man just burst through the wall. He said, oh, yeah. Like he's <laughs> oh, worst. worst no, oh, this, come on. Women and children and men dead strewn across the. Um, but I, I, I work like if I, I, I had a pop, very globally popular video game. People are obsessed with the video game. The whole thing was the deep lore of the video game. And I on purpose yeah. never played it once. I think there's a value in your ignorance sometimes. And I think 
Um, it's a strong one when I want to talk to that CMO. I want to talk to the CEO. I want to talk to the head of sales. What's your real thing? Now leave me alone because there's so many things yeah. that you take in as true and obvious and necessary that I think in, you know, it really helped me to be the one that had no idea how to play the video game in order to see what other people that didn't know how to play the video game would think of it. And I do that right. a lot. Like, I mean, I didn't not use Irish spring when I worked on Irish spring, but not into the company culture of, Oh, we can't go there. Or this didn't work because of that. Like, but let's figure that out later. Right now I'm going to walk in with your problem and being entertaining. Yeah. Let's see what comes out of that. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's just, it, it's funny because it's just, it feels to me I, and, and naturally because I am consultative by nature and also because the, the, it's, it's, it has always been the like, I've never had a good, or I've never wanted really to have a good off the shelf widget to give to people to be like, here is the prepackaged solution to your problem, you know, in an understandable form factor at a, at a understandable price point, attainable price point. Uh, that, that, that that's I've, why we will I, never be fabulously wealthy because that's how you do that. You create a widget and you sell it over. Yeah, and over. I suppose. Just being cynical. No, no, no. Well, but, but, it, but that's, yeah, it's, 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 it, it, you're right. I should just create widgets. God damn it. I'm in the wrong line no, of work. I really missed that boat. Here, actually, had... start, start over. I yeah, have exactly. five answers to how you are going to be a success. Log on to my course, what, draw them the out. The thing you don't know is that making yeah. a widget is easier than you imagine. With household you. tools, they're in your drawer you. right now. Yeah. As an expert on LinkedIn, come. I tried to kill myself last night. By the way, can I just, can I, can I, can I say something? I, 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 I had an impulse recently. And by the way, listeners, uh, please, and I'm totally serious about this. Reach out to me and, and ask because I'm interested like on, on a very, on a limited basis to, to try it. Uh, I, I have a, I have a, an acquaintance friend, certainly somebody that, that, you know, I've sort of worked with and interacted professionally with for years who has recently transitioned into a, a, a mentor type business, but is doing it in a way that I find like really annoying, deeply, deeply annoying. And I, the last time I saw a post, I was just like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to offer my services as a mentor for free, just to undermine this, the way that you're doing this. I just, I like, I like what you're doing so little that I'm just going to try to compete. I'm going to offer my time for free to compete with it. So if anybody wants me to mentor you, I am available up to a certain number of slots, literally for free. I, because I, 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 I learn from you the same way as you learn from me, which is the secret, right? Which is really the, and this is the thing that kills me about that that certainty. It's like, let me tell you about the things you don't know. Meanwhile, it should be like, why don't we have a conversation? Because I'm going to learn as much from you as you're going to get from me. I may have a more pithy way to say it because I've done it wrong 8 million times. But anyway, uh, so Jason, if you'd like to be, if you'd like to be my mentee. Yeah. Well, I said you're going to put the handle of that person who you hate in the <laughs> notes after this. <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm going to, I'm just going to write the name, but I'm not going to put the, you know, the at symbol. It'll no, be I a don't. subtweet and we'll see I'm what happens. <laughs> Oh man. All right. Well, what else, what else grabbed you from the, from the list of links? Uh, the only one I wanted to talk about out loud too was uh, everything grabs me and then I get overwhelmed because everything grabs me and I want to read all of them and I can't and I prioritize. Uh, I, that wine moms turning into uh, mushroom moms is like, I've had this thought for a minute. I, I hung out significantly with kids with a mushroom mom one time and um, it will very quickly because the, the ramp to like, <clears throat> tee hee I drink wine little into like signs that were like it's wine o'clock and mommy needs her grape juice or whatever <clears throat> that took a while the barrier is already broken so now give me my mushrooms on crate and barrel signs crate and barrel is nicer than that like what am I talking hobby lobby hobby lobby signs that are like little mushrooms and like mommy's little helper it 
six months away. It's coming. It's coming because it's like there's no shame factor <clears throat> that made it that naughty. That took 20 years of like a mom admitting she had wine in this patriarchal society where women are like, that was such right, a crazy right, right, thing. Right. And now it's so common that the barrier to I'm a mushroom mom, it's a little naughty now, but not, I mean, it's like going to be legal everywhere. It's going to be like, we're there. Yeah. We're going to be there what? very okay, soon. So, so Okay, so so I have a couple of things. So you're referring to a, a story that was in the um, Wall Street Journal about <clears throat> moms, professional women who are using quote unquote microdoses of mushrooms to help them manage, let's call it stress or how to augment their creativity in the face of lots of domestic challenge, you know, domestic demands and challenges and professional challenges, all this kind of stuff, um, which is fascinating. Now you are also when you're not in your bunker. Uh, based in Oregon, where mushrooms have been legal for the past, what, four, three, four years? Something like that? I don't know if it's been that long. I remember somebody getting pretty in trouble. For, I mean, it was medical, maybe legal for three or four yeah. years. Well, yeah, e e e either way, I mean, the, 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 what, I, what I wonder about is whether you have noticed there being any sort of social dynamic shifting at all since that has, uh, you know, been become above board where where like i could just walk into the right store and just buy mushrooms and be like yeah this is normal stuff the way that i can now buy cannabis in new york but where when i went to philly over the weekend i cannot buy cannabis right, right? it's probably my my bubble is is titanium i feel like i saw more of this in la just in terms of like the legality or its ease has not been a uh barrier for most people that I know that want to take mushrooms or ketamine for their th therapy. So I I was more acutely aware of it in LA when it was absolutely not a like <laughs> you have to if you haven't heard much about it, it must be sort of surprising to be like hearing a mom holding a baby be like, well, my ketamine, you know, package came in the mail. <laughs> like, isn't that that horse thing that gay people die from? So I think that <laughs> That turnaround has been, you know, you're seeing it's the articles like these in the Wall Street Journal yeah. that talk about yeah. it's what's happening now and it's happening quickly. Um, but again, it is like in a in a elite bubble of entertainment people in L.A. They've all been taking mushrooms openly and talking about their benefits. Which, by the way, my my like sort of snark about this doesn't dismiss them. I've seen it work unbelievably well on close yeah. to people like me. I it's it's time we all saw the fucking uh, Michael Pollan Netflix that we all we all saw sure. probably two and a half of how to change your mind yeah yeah um, so I I have no um, uh, nothing other than it's gonna get a lot less um, elite progressive yeah. a lot more commodified cheesy that's so quick. funny but but it's it's yeah it's it's really interesting to think about and you know i would call that a sort of a second order effect of the of this change is that you end up with right chintzy home decor when you walk into the airbnb in some you know purple state someplace and, and there it is inevitable like mom drops baby out window on mushrooms and a moral panic, and then it'll come back. Well, it's like just... that. Like that. Uh, the the pilot who tried to crash the plane on oh, mushrooms yeah. a couple no. of weeks ago, or whatever it was. I, I don't. I, it, it's hard for me to understand how that could be a thing, but I, you know, I think it's funny though. It's like the 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 moral panic involved it, it is such a factor in these cases, and it's always and it, and it, and it, it, it's. It's it's a sort of similar reflexism to the guy who wants the sneaker to go viral, right? Like somebody knows that there is a true fact or a guaranteed outcome from something. And so we're going to stop it or we're going to promote it according to this yep. true fact, guaranteed outcome that I am aware of. Again, Pick your you side probably, is not complex. The, you but probably don't know about it. Am I a huge about. mushroom fan or do I think it's Satan's own? Uh, yeah. I haven't decided yet. Well, I mean, this is the advantage to being a Satanist, right? Is that you can think both, right? Like, <laughs> is, that a, is that the same? Anton LaVey had it right. <laughs> oh, man. Is that what my therapist oh. told me? I'm a Satanist? <laughs> I hadn't, that hasn't been a by, breakthrough for me. By yet. the way, oh, my God. Sorry. 
I, so, I mean, first, first, uh, uh, full disclosure, I am not, a th- I, I, I am, I don't have a therapist, have never seen a therapist, um, I feel, yeah, that tracks. you know, if I'm, if I'm, if, you know, I kind of, I, I feel like I don't, I feel like I'm pretty self-actualized. I don't really feel like I need one, but I understand very clearly the benefits of it. And I, and I think there's a lot of things that most people don't interact with outside of therapy that I try to make a part of, of, of everyday conversation. That being said, Bethany Costantino from Best Coast, formerly of Best Coast or famously of Best Coast, you familiar with the band from LA? She 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 got she went viral on a TikTok thing the other day where she complained about um the fact that her la- her most recent record didn't perform very well and how bummed it was and how much it sucked to put yourself into something and have it not succeed the way that you expected it to. And all of which is like you know, on oversharing a little whiny, kind of annoying, whatever. But the thing that she's and the reason I bring it up, the thing that she said, she was just like, I don't know, maybe I should just quit music and become a therapist. And I love, yeah. I love that sense that it's just like, oh yeah, I've been I, to therapy. Like a like I'm, it's a professional shopper or something. Like you're like I, you yeah, know. It, literally, right? Like oh, I can either go work for Instacart and deliver groceries, or I can become a therapist. Like my mm-hmm. choice, wherever I want. She sounds and like she's it, got a lot going on. <laughs> that, well, maybe she's just very honest. Like I bet it does. Suck. Well, I mean, it's clearly, but I but I I think that attitude is sort of emblematic of the current moment, and I and I. I would like us to shake ourselves out of that because I just, I feel like it, it does a disservice to everything involved, right? It does a disservice to obviously the therapy professionals. It does a disservice to the weight and the importance of working out your personal issues and trauma. uh, Anyway, I just, I just, I was, I was sort of stunned by that. And that was not the thing anybody complained about. Everybody else was like, you're such a whiner, shut up. And it was like, fine, fair enough. But the, the the switch that you think you can just pull where it's just like, oh yeah, no, I'm now an accredited professional in something totally different that I've never done before. I I'm making the decision. I'm thinking about how bad I want to watch a show where you go to therapy for the first time. <laughs> and you're so confident in your like extracurricular therapy that you would sign any release and be like, yeah, of course, I'll show everything. It would be like the editor and the producer are there like, oh yeah, totally. This will be a boring show while we giggle because yeah. you're going to be Something's gonna come out. Woo. Yeah, yeah, I mean, probably. Woo. Did you watch the curse, by the way? Yeah, oh yeah, but I'm too, I'm too behind. I haven't seen the finale. Okay, I'm like right. I'm well, saving I, it like a fat kid saving Halloween candy. Like I am, because <laughs> I heard the end is just the most remarkable thing. Like I have two more, and I'm just really kind of <laughs> dreading. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's something. Freya, my donkey. Hey, hey. Freya hasn't seen the curse either. The the but it. it I don't know. The reason I bring it up is it just, it is, it feels very apropos of this moment of like meta therapy exchange, the producer's view of things and so on and so forth. So watch it and then we can re we can resume. Resume. Someone's here. Oh, look, it's my 17 year old. Oh, um, well, listen, Jason, we've, 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 we've hit the hour mark. So it's an appropriate time to, to, you know, to wrap up and say goodbye. I really appreciate the time. Thank you. And you haven't, you, you, you've managed to keep your secret for a whole hour. So I guess we're all just going to have to wait for the scoop to be revealed in the sick weekly newsletter next week. Change that's coming to the world based on my job change. Well, I, 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 for one, am very eager to see what you do. I've been a huge fan for, you know, two decades and I anticipate for another Eight to ten decades more. Um, <laughs> yeah. Based on the new science that we're seeing coming, coming out of the newsletter. There's somebody in AI is making something useful that will help us. Just so, like we can count on I, that. It is not going to be useful if I'm in marketing in ten decades. I will have. <laughs> I will, you'll have seen my last LinkedIn post. I will have killed myself. Oh my god! All right. Well, on that additional decade of marketing. Uh, on that cheery note, <laughs> it's Signing great off. to see you. I will Thanks see you again you. soon. Fun. Oh, dude, of course. Well, we'll talk Later. again soon, but great to see you. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll talk soon. Bye.